Hello and welcome, I'm Anne-Marie, he's Chris and this is Jibber Jabber. Now Chris, tell me, is there anything, anything at all that you would like to discuss from the past week? Has anything happened to you? Anything you want to get off your chest? Anything that has struck you or changed your opinion with anything? Tell me, tell me, tell me. What's going on? Tell me, tell me, tell me. What do you know what? I did mm-hmm. I did I did uh, learn a little something. Oh. And did you know that mosquitoes yes, we're talking about mosquitoes today. Uh mosquitoes can tell what blood type you are, and they prefer type O. Uh, oh. Now a study found oh, oh 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 they do now a study found that in a control setting mosquitoes landed on people with type O blood nearly twice as often as those with type A. Wow! Well, that would explain so, uh, a lot. That is something that I have learnt this week. And um, can we just say as well, in the background with you, it's not a mosquito that is uh, scurrying around, but your dog, I believe it is. It is. (laughs) It is my dog. I'm sorry. I do (laughs) apologise. We apologise for the animals again. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) But yeah, that's what I learned this week. But overall, uh, yeah, pretty happy. Uh, Nothing to uh, report back. But this is what I learned about mosquitoes. That is fascinating stuff. Very, very interesting. And would you believe you can guarantee i always get bitten and guess what blood type i am are you type o o positive o positive i have no idea what uh blood type i am maybe that's something i should go and find out and come back and report in a later show have you ever given blood i have uh i have not given blood i don't think no i can't remember not that i have call no, no because i'm quite squeamish with uh blood so anytime i've had to, i've only had blood taken a couple of times but whenever i do i practically pass out so i would love to give blood however it is not something that i have done i believe you have though right yeah yeah several times now yeah um but that's how i found out my blood group was by giving oh. blood Maybe maybe I should try and give it a whirl and just look away when they put the needle in. Uh, I'll so come and hold your hand. And hit the floor. <laughs> You're a good friend. <laughs> Such a good friend. And laugh. <laughs> what is the best thing that you have dressed up for as Halloween? Oh, good question. Because Halloween is right around the corner, isn't it? Um, the best thing I've ever dressed up as for Halloween, I think, is I dressed up as the lead person from A Clockwork Orange. Uh, so have you seen that movie, A Clockwork Orange? Yeah. It, yeah. So I dressed up as that person. So I had on like, you know, the, uh, what do you call them? They call them suspenders, but what are they? They are braces i had the braces yes. on i had the bowler yeah i had like the eye all that malarkey thinking i was being super original and that night when i went out every single person was dressed the same i had never seen oh. it before ever right something where i'm gonna be really original i never really dress up but that's what i went out as and everybody was dressed up but i do think it is probably my best outfit like dressing up for halloween that's my best outfit but everybody had the same idea that year uh <laughs> what about you well, I'm quite boring, I'll be honest with you. I don't yeah. go over the top with Halloween costumes. I tend mm. to um, put more effort into the kids dressing up for Halloween than what I ever yeah. have done for myself. So I've, you know, dressed up as a witch and yeah. a black cat. And... Oh, the good one. Oh, that's a good one. Did you have the tail and everything and the cat ears? Yeah. 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 It's, it's a good... You know, yeah. So it's that kind of thing. Yeah. But you talk about kids as well. Do you not remember, like now, you know, Halloween is on steroids. In the UK, we have definitely become very much like Americanized about it. Not that I'm necessarily saying that's a bad thing. No, I'm not also not saying that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. I'm just, 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 I'm just being, I'm just observing what I see, right? But as a kid, do you remember you'd get those blimmin' witch's nails that were like clear plastic with the red bits at the end? I do. You'd wrap a bin liner around you, yep. stick a hat on and call it an outfit. 100%. That was our childhood and fake that blood. That was our childhood. Fake and blood. And the fangs. I, Can you remember putting the, the fake fangs and they used to cut into your gums? And they'd glow in the dark. Yes. 
yes um yes. the fake fangs yes i wasn't allowed fake blood uh mm. no because uh, my mother was scared that it would get on the carpet and do you know what she was probably right me and my sister were probably would have put it on the carpet not necessarily purposefully but you know that's what you would have do, done it they? anyway we would have so, done it anyway i've got to say though while we're on this subject of halloween mm. what is the best costume you've ever seen not necessarily your own costume um the best costume i've ever seen oh gosh um well i once um i once saw uh not in person but i did see that somebody got dressed up as as uh ursula what's that movie called little mermaid little mermaid and i thought that was a pretty cool costume um okay that's a pretty cool one because you know like the villains and you know i suppose they're really great to dress up as for halloween aren't they a villain from a movie yeah uh what about you what's the best one you've ever seen so Halloween is all about the the creepiness and the scariness and I yeah. took the kids out trick or treating the one year when they were very young and we were going around all the neighbors houses and we knocked on one door and it was a group of young adults who mm. were getting together ready to go out to celebrate Halloween on a night out and a guy answered the door and bear in mind he was quite a lot taller than I was anyway I would say he was <laughs> maybe that that's about hard. <laughs> six foot so he was already towering over me yeah I'm not great when it comes to clowns so imagine my horror oh. yeah imagine my horror when he opens the door to my kids yeah. trick-or-treating <laughs> and his face was completely done up as a clown and I'm not just saying you know just a bit of makeup he had gone full out all at, it was fantastic but I couldn't even look him in the eye I couldn't get away quick it enough was scary because it was scream? freaking me I didn't scream but I did sort of my heart stopped <laughs> yeah <laughs> it took your breath away it when really I was did, seven yeah. When I was seven, this wasn't a uh, Halloween party, but I did go to a birthday party dressed as a clown, and my outfit was insane. I was trying to dig the pictures out. So it was a vintage outfit. So the outfit I was wearing had belonged to my mum's sister. Oh. So it was something like already 30 odd years old at that point. <laughs> um, I, but I, it was such a good little outfit. And I, yeah, I, 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 looked, I looked the business in it. You looked the and part. actually. I really like the part. And then I, um, having talked about clowns, other, they're not technically a clown, I don't think, but I did dress up as the Joker one year as well for the Halloween. The Joker's a clown? Is the Joker a clown? Yeah. Do you remember when Heath Ledger did the Joker way back when? It was that year I dressed up as, as the Joker. But However, it was kind of, um, it, it was more of like the makeup job because I'd been... I'd been out doing, I was doing some work and I came back and was going on a night out and then you know, some lovely people made me look like the Joker. Uh, and that was pretty good. And I went out that evening and, and I was the only one that did look like that that evening. So that was better so maybe than the year before. that could have been better than your Clockwork Orange. Which had happened the year before, yeah. So maybe it was, but I still think the Clockwork Orange one was my best outfit. It was oh. super cool. It's just that, unfortunately, everybody else that year also had the same idea. Do you, um, do you love Halloween, though? Is Halloween like a, a time that you really... Yes, love or is it I when it's like, oh, love God. it. No, autumn yeah. is my favorite, favorite time of year. So I absolutely yeah, love Halloween. Um, I love the hustle and bustle of getting the kids dressed up and the excitement of going out trick or treating. And um, even before having the kids, going out for Halloween was like one of my favorite nights out of the year. Because you knew it was, even if you hadn't made a massive effort to dress up yourself, you knew it was going to be a good, good night. It was going to, um, yeah, it was going to be a good one. I agree with that. Yeah. Actually, Halloween was always a good night out. I loved Halloween as a kid. Autumn absolutely is my favourite time of year. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that, pretty good. Yeah, brilliant. Awesome. Shall we? Uh, shall we move into the next one? Oh, shall we? Shall we? Oh, shall go let's, on let's then. Let's do it. Go on then, if you could. Never have I ever. <laughs> prank yeah. called someone whoa oh. when I oh, oh this is a can of worms so <laughs> when I was at school I'm going to be really mindful to leave out people's names because most of these people now are, are, are professionals with 
you know proper jobs <laughs> um and and like this not, one over not here, like us chris <laughs> not like us not like me um but anyway when i was in school we used to love prank calling people and we'd go to one of my friends houses who lived really close to the school so we could walk there on lunch and this was back in the day before i mean do you not remember when text messages were like 25p and you know to call somebody on your mobile was astronomical but we'd use the landline this is how far back I'm going. And we would call people and prank call them, pretend to be different types of people from different different places. But our favorite thing was when we'd get an answer phone and we would leave messages for the people. <laughs> the destruction that we never saw, and we would chuckle all day about this. But there was this one time, <laughs> a really good friend of mine, um, had a party and their parents had gone away and we had gone <laughs> we'd gone to their house and we decided uh to prank call people and another one of our one of the people that we prank called was this rather snooty person at our school who thought they were the business they thought they were as cool as as, as anything and we told them they'd won a one ticket never have they ever I, i've never i've never heard somebody so excited in all my life and we were like well not so cool now are we no <laughs> uh but also during this little fest of calling people uh we called another of our friends who was there at the time at the party their cousin and we'd prank called them several times now things kind of went a bit squiff because the next thing you know our friend's mother is banging on the door dragging them home they got into so much trouble for it it was just awful we were like i don't think they're gonna want to be friends with us anymore this is just awful um but they were friends with us and everything was perfectly fine in the end but yeah i used to love a prank phone call uh, and i've been prank phone called other people have prank called me um uh, people uh, yeah. that you what know you? or people that you don't know people yeah, yeah, people that I know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, people that I know. It's, it's, I think this was like very much, not recently, but, you know, sort of like way back, back in the day, teenage years, where people would call you and hang up or that kind of malarkey. What about you, though? Yeah, so in my teenage years, um, it was great fun to sit on the college bus coming home and we wouldn't just phone people that we knew, though. Oh, no, no, yeah, but us too. Yeah, we dial completely random numbers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, well, some of the things that we'd come out with on this phone call, I do remember phoning one and, hi, it's Elise, I'm calling. <laughs> but the worst part was I had to hang up really quick because the rest of the bus seemed to find it hilarious to erupt in laughter and start singing, why you got to come by now, officer? <laughs> 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 and i'll give you the key <laughs> just just harmless harmless fun yeah um well i was gonna say something i completely forgot what it was i should have written it down but um do you not just hate it when that happens it's just like whizzes out of your brain um but yeah no i think it was it was just absolute harmless fun and i i suppose it doesn't really Maybe people don't do it very often now because of caller ID. But of course, there was none of that stuff was there. There was no, there was 1471, but you could craftily put a number before your number. I can't remember what the number was actually to, to, to sort of hide the number. And it was all very much, um, all just a little bit of silliness. But yeah, uh, it, it was definitely one of our, our favorite things to do, uh, to prank call people, but never, did you ever call like any sort of, oh, that's what I was going to say. Do you know sometimes when you get call centers, again, this probably doesn't happen very often anymore because most people don't have a landline, but you'd get a call center calling up and saying, oh, hello, is, you know, such and such, like they'd call at our house and say, oh, hello, is Mrs. Gordon there, please? Is Mr. Gordon there, please? It's my mum and dad. Um, and uh, we used to often say, I bloody hope no, because we're the burglars. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> So while I won't mention any names, I do know of a person who um, will see a withheld number calling, Yeah, even now, on the landline, because some of us still do have a landline. Do you still have a landline? Yeah. Well, I mean, my parents still have a landline. I used to have one as well, but I never, 
ever yeah. used it. Yeah, but I'm not talking about me. Somebody else still has oh, a somebody landline. Else, somebody else. And yeah. uh, you see the number coming through. And if it's withheld, I know that they will answer their phone by going, Hello, Battersea Dogs Home. Oh my God, my dad does that. No. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure you've been there when he's done that. Have you not been there when he's he's done that? No, no. Yeah, I, he does that, yeah. Oh, I didn't know and that. And it really throws people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. brilliant, though. They normally yeah. end up hanging up. <laughs> yeah, or, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm just calling because you've had an accent. I haven't wet myself, have I? I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to remember that one. <laughs> you need to remember all of these. So rather than being rude, I think it's awful that when people are rude to people in service... But I am very much on board with having a little bit of fun. (laughs) And that's all it is, folks. Just a little bit of fun. (laughs) 100%. If you could create a theme park. Oh, yeah, go on. What would it look like? Now, I've got my answer set. I know exactly what mine would look like. Let's hear yours. you want to go first? You You want to hear mine? Yeah. So I would love a theme park where you stepped in and it was like a 90s music video. And everything was like a like a nineties music video, and everything was ninety music video themed. So you'd have like rides where you could like go on. I don't know, like I'm thinking off the top of my head, but you could go through like a um, uh, a Destiny's Child video, and you'd be on the ride or interactively in it. Um, and there'd be like brilliant things like Chubba Chubs and uh, Pepsi Cola and all this kind of malarkey. I think that and everything would be bright and neon coloured and. It would play only 90s, like brilliant 90s music. And each section of the park would be themed. That's what I think would be, you know what? I'm going to start building this park as, as soon as we get off this. <laughs> I, I've convinced myself. I, you don't look very convinced. If no. only you could see her face. Do you but, know what? what? Let me know how that what? pans out. <laughs> tell, us, tell us your brilliant idea. What is your brilliant idea for a theme park? So imagine Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And then think, one of my favorite films of all time. Yeah, and then think Oakwood. Yeah, are you familiar with Oakwood? I am. Yeah, I've been quite a few times actually. So as you go in through the entrance, you've yeah. got a little train that takes you into the park. Yes. Yeah. So instead of that train taking you into the park, you'd have a chocolate river with a boat <gasps> taking you into the park. Oh my god! This actually is so much better than my idea. <laughs> I've overthought this, haven't I? No, so, I'm annoyed that I didn't think of this because Charlie mm-hmm. and the Chocolate Factory is one of my, definitely in my top five of favourite films <laughs> of all time. Now, as much as I love the Tim Burton film, and we all know how much I love Tim Burton, you know, mainly because I want a job off of him, uh, but <laughs> the original is my favourite, and it's my favourite because everything on that set was real. Yeah. That's why it's my favourite. Anyway, back over to you. I'm, I'm hogging, your, hogging the light for your uh, brilliant theme park. So, yeah, I would have this chocolate river with the boat taking you into the park. The trees would no longer be just trees. They would be candy floss trees. <sighs> I, I want to go. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> this is the best thing. Why have they not invented this, though? I don't know. Maybe they're waiting for the right? me. Maybe they are. Who owns the rights to that movie? Is it was that wasn't a Disney movie? The remake was it? No, no. I don't think it was. Why no. has no one done this? I don't know. It would be amazing. So amazing. Yeah, love Johnny Honestly, Depp. Like, it would be awesome. Yeah, I, I, I think this would be brilliant. Yeah, you'd Honestly. have like and the rides have, like, holographic... and the roller coasters, and they'd all be like lit up and. <laughs> At certain areas dotted around the park, you could help yourself to, oh, I don't know, um, lollipops, you know, oh. like the candy lollipops. And... But they're sweets that taste like things. So, um, yes. you know, the, yeah, So, but they wouldn't taste like sweets. They would taste like a roast dinner or they would taste like a burger. Or... Exactly. You yes. wouldn't need to go to a oh. food stall, you see? I absolutely love this. Because um, also in the movie as well, I think in both movies, there is that scene where they're on like uh, a ride and they go through the next bit and there's all the lights and stuff. Yeah, that would be brilliant. And also, do you know when uh, Violet um, sort of starts to plump up like a uh, blueberry, I think she's yes. meant to be, you could have something that plays with a size. So when things appear bigger than they are or smaller than they are, yeah. Honestly, I am. I think like this a is house the best. of mirrors, but bigger. 
bigger. Oh, bigger. honestly, you you've won hands down. Don't get me wrong, I still love my nineties music theme park, but yours is so well formed. I cannot <laughs> even argue with you. Oh, that I need to get on music. it. I need to get on it. Can you, you imagine? Yeah. Do you look, reckon I'd get good... the rights to be able to open up a theme park like this? I think we should start a petition if you don't get the rights. Honestly, I, I look. What are I'm you going to fund friend. it? Do you want to fund it for me? I <laughs> yeah, need sponsors. I've got, like, <laughs> I've got like a hundred and something million sat in my back pocket. <laughs> sure, you can have it. Um, but as a good friend, I'm going to with I'm going to put my plans on the back burner for mine, and I'm going to solely help you with yours. Oh, that's what friends are for. <laughs> that's what friends are for. Hey. Do you know what, though? We could what? maybe, if you're going to support me like that, maybe we could combine the two. <gasps> Don't toy with me. That would be... So- well, we need to have a business meeting after this, and we'll we'll discuss this properly. We'll discuss it. We'll discuss it properly. Let's, Let's get we'll on work it. Out- We'll get the we'll get the figures on that. We'll, we'll figure out who we're going to get to build it. You and I are going into business. Yeah. I have a word of the week. Oh, we love a word of the week. I know. Right. 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 <laughs> can you tell me, and I bet you can't, can you tell me what sure. lollygag means? I have absolutely zero idea. What does the word lollygag mean? It's a brilliant word. When I first read it, I wasn't quite sure, you know. <laughs> Did you think it was something mucky? Yeah, a little bit. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Anyway, it turns out lollygag actually means to spend time aimlessly oh my gosh i'm constantly lollygagging and i didn't even know it I are, know. You a lolly, are you a lollygagger all the time 100 percent. it's a bit of a tongue twister lollygag yeah it is a little bit i guess and i suppose dropping it into a sentence would be as well but do you know what if you are listening in on this on this episode and you fancy trying to drop this into a sentence with your friends or your family Please let us know how that goes down. I would be most intrigued. Lollygag, 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 lollygag. Be... It is a good tongue to assume. I know, I know. Good word, I am. Do you fancy a weekly debate? Go on then, if you're quick. I do like a debate. Are we going to be quite proper about this debate as well? Should we try and debate it up? Shall we? Shall we do our best? Let's I go. Think I do. Th- I Let's do fight think. it out. We are four episodes into the new season, and I do think that we are not necessarily we're that pretty into this poor. section. We're pretty poor. Pretty rubbish. Yeah. But we're having jolly good fun. Over to you, AM. 21 should be the legal age for driving around the world. Yeah, I, I kind of think that the, I, I think it should be 21. I do, I do think, especially in Britain, because we have the, I think the age is 17, right? Is that right? Is 17? Yeah. Just drive in Britain. You can't, yeah. yeah. I do think that is a little bit too young. And I think that 21, you are maybe just, even if it's just a smidge, another lovely word for you, smidge, even if it's a smidge, <laughs> sorry, I've just given myself the chuckles, <laughs> even, <laughs> smidge, smidge, uh, even, <laughs> Can we just say it is so flipping warm today? I think we've gone a little bit delirious. But even if you are just a smidge older, um, it is uh, therefore you're a slightly bit more mature. I, I, I would hope. Um, I think it does make a difference if you think of how you were at seventeen to how you were at twenty one. There is a there is a little bit, if not a major amount of of growth. Is there not in maturity? I don't know. I'm going to disagree with you. I think we've got ourselves a debate this week. Way four Way. shows in, and we finally have a debate. So my my argument with this would be mm. that for many young people, yeah, for many young people, being able to get a driver's license and getting out in a car is quite often their their sense of freedom. Yeah, no, I completely understand that, yeah. You know, their escape, um, depending on their background, their circumstances, et cetera, et cetera. It can also give them, I guess, a purpose in life because once they've passed the driving test, um, they they are free to go and get themselves a job and they haven't got to rely on anybody. Um, 
so I think I think seventeen is maybe a good age. Um, mm. A lot of people tend to start working around sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So yeah, I, this is true. I actually, I agree with seventeen in the UK, in the UK being the legal age. Yeah, I do. The only thing that I would advise is to drive safely. Yeah, I mean, that's quite interesting, isn't it? No one ever says, drive like a lunatic. <laughs> People always say, drive safely. I'd like to think not, yes. <laughs> I do think that 21 is a more appropriate age. I think this for a lot of things. I do, especially as I grow older, you kind of go, actually, yeah, maybe that is quite young. Obviously, it's not part of the debate, but I think, you know, to be able to get married is quite young. So I I sort of, I, for me, 21, I think you're a little bit more mature. I mean, you know, you are in charge of like, is it, how much does a car weigh? I don't know. It's like two ton of metal or something. I have no idea, but it's, you know, it's, as you said, drive safe because cars can do some serious damage. Yes, indeed. Um, and I think also as well, not just looking at cars, because I think you can have a motorcycle license at about the same age as well in the UK, about 17, mm. is that right? Or was it 16? 16, I believe, for a, for and, a, a moped. Oh, it 16? Moped. A moped, yeah. which are just as, if not more lethal, than a flipping car. So, yeah, yeah I just think that you're maybe a bit more mature. Like I said, I, you know, and, and also as well, I think this is very much like an individual assessment, isn't it? Because you, you'll get one 17 year old, 17 year old, 17 year old who is really mature, and then a 21 year old who's completely immature. Exactly. And that was going to be maturity. my next point. You've just taken the words right out of my mouth. You, can, you can't any judge no. <laughs> any one individual because every individual is different. So I, I think, you know, sensibility, it all boils down to how sensible the individual is. And I've heard as well, they are making it more and more difficult to be able to pass your test. You know, the the uh, theory test, I'm sure they have theory tests in other parts of the world, but in the UK, we, we have a theory test. And now I think the to pass that, it's quite, I think it's like something like 50 questions. And I think pretty much you've got to get all 50 correct, with exception to maybe far one or off. two. Not yeah. 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 So I, I don't know. I But I, I still, I'm going to stick with, I think 21 should be the the age i think a lot of things should be lifted to 21 uh we talked about on last show whether um alcohol should be illegal i think in the uk alcohol should be lifted to 21 as well Mm -hmm. just like in america um but i guess on this one we are going to have to uh agree agree to disagree disagree correct it's that part of the show again i've got some beautiful reviews to uh we do love a review we do love a review this one is an airbnb Ooh, so have, this... have you ever stayed in an Airbnb? E... No. No? No. I did a little while back. I stayed in one beautiful building. Um, it was like a converted shed that had been turned into this really quite um, uh, brilliant sort of little house. And it had like loads of glass and everything. But can I just say, the oven was absolutely filthy. They left us a file that was about 12 inches thick of house rules. And not one of them had been done. So, oh, and it wasn't cheap. And what I'm going to say here is that if you are renting out your house as an Airbnb, make sure your standards are high, especially if you're charging the moolah. Oh, right. You know, I see. So, back over to yours. What are your? What are you? What are these lovely little gems of reviews that you found? So Airbnb. I was meant to stay in an Airbnb last autumn. Um, mm. for one thing or another, we had to cancel the trip, and we didn't quite make it. So. Ah, better luck next time. <laughs> better luck next time. Let's go into this review. So this review is mm. from the Airbnb owner <laughs> reviewing the guest. Oh, the ge- the owner is reviewing the guest. Okay, okay. This is a first <laughs> for me because I'd never seen anything like this before. So bear with me on this one, guys. Bear with. Yeah. Chin was an inspiring individual and I have no issue recommending her as a guest. She is the kind of guest you'd love to see staying with you. She is full of knowledge and fascinating ideas, and she is self-sufficient. I'd love to welcome her back again to my home sometime in the future. What a lovely review. How lovely is that? If somebody wrote that about me, I'd be so proud, right? I'd be proud, yeah. But the issue is, according to Chin, she and this (laughs) host 
never met or even spoke. <laughs> the host is a complete fantasist. <laughs> <laughs> so what are your views oh. on that? Well, I mean, listen, Chin got a great review. Like, you know, we can't say fairer than that. But I mean, what the heck? Like, why would you just not say like they were... I, I couldn't recommend them more. They were great guests. Like, that would be true, wouldn't they? Because Chin would have checked out. They would have checked the establishment, gone, yeah, they've left it in a good condition. But to go on and say they were fascinating and we had a lovely chat when you've never even met them. <laughs> I mean... Maybe they were thinking of somebody else. We don't know. <laughs> uh, well, any ball for any ball. That's all I've got to say. Some more Airbnb. So this one is titled The Paper Thin Walls. Oh, this sounds... Uh... I think we know where this one is going, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Indeed. It seems this property's host promised sufficient privacy and comfy amenities. Unfortunately, he promised more than he could deliver because this is what the guest had to say. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. If by comfortable this host meant being able to hear every word the neighbours were saying, then yeah, this property was as comfortable <laughs> as they come. The walls were so thin that sometimes I could hear the neighbours arguing about who no. left the toilet seat up. And wow. do not even get me started on the bathroom that was separated from the kitchen by a curtain. Oh, oh wow. Oh. I want to know how much they were charging for this uh, Airbnb. Doesn't it make that you is think? shocking. It does make you well, think, listen, doesn't it? Listen, everyone has to make money, why? And it's what makes the world go around, apparently. But can I just say, Airbnb, I'm pretty positive, this started out as people that were not going to be in their homes, just having people stay there to make a little bit of money and make sure their home ultimately wasn't burgled or something of that nature. Now, people are buying houses and turning them into Airbnbs to make a killing and a living. Uh, this is blooming shocking, it's though. Crazy. I would be mortified. I would have yeah. as well, I think. That's not overly hygienic to have a bathroom no. in a kitchen separated by a curtain. Anyway, who am I to say? Who am I to say? <laughs> we We're all say. different, aren't we? That is the end of the show. I've been Anne Marie. He has been Chris, and this has been Jibber Jabber. We'll catch you next week. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>